Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we'll see how to create a Sudoku solver in Excel like this one here using VBA macros. So this solver can crack any Sudoku in just a couple of seconds, which is not bad for a VBA program. Let me show you. This is one of the most difficult puzzles. It's in several websites. So I have copied it here and as you see it is solved in just two seconds. It is indeed very difficult but the Excel solver can crack it fast. This puzzle actually has multiple solutions, so it's easier for the computer to find one of them. Sudoku puzzles shouldn't have multiple solutions though, but that's the case here. There is another very difficult puzzle, can also be found on the internet as the most difficult in the world, uh, something like that. Let me copy it here, and with this one, the solver actually needs some more time, but it also finds a solution. And this one has a unique solution, I have tested that with my multi-solver, so I've checked some other difficult puzzles, difficult and very difficult puzzles, uh, most of them are solved in just a few seconds, uh, one or two seconds, but I came across one or two that took longer. And that depends on the solver or uh, on the architecture of the solver. So the solver uses Sudoku solving techniques, we, we'll talk about that in a moment, and then when it cannot progress with any of the techniques and that's for difficult and very difficult puzzles, it uses then a backtracking algorithm to search the tree of possibilities to reach a solution. Okay, we're gonna create the solver or a simplified version of this solver from scratch and step by step. So let's open a new file and I'll copy here a simple medium level Sudoku. And the first thing we'll do is to get the hints or pencil marks for a given Sudoku and create a grid. I'm also gonna call it grid of possibilities or candidates. And we'll have that in a separate sheet. So this one is Sudoku and this other one is Solver. Now let's move to the Visual Basic Editor. And I'm gonna change the name for each sheet here. So for short, Sud and Sol. So in the first macro, we're gonna get the pencil marks or candidates. So sub get candidates and for each number, so for num equals one to nine, if all the nine positions for that number have not yet been resolved, if worksheet function count if suit dot range B2 to J10, that's the range where we pasted the, the Sudoku, comma number is below nine, then we're gonna loop through each blank and see if that number can be a candidate. So for each cell in suit range B2 to J10, special cells XL cell type blanks, we're gonna check now the three Sudoku conditions. So first for rows, if worksheet function count if suit.rows cell.row comma number is zero, so the number is not in that row, and worksheet function count if suit columns cell.column comma number equals zero, so it's not in that column, and worksheet function count if suit dot range, and here we're using a custom function to return the address of the range for that particular block for a given row and column. And this is the same function we use in the Excel Sudoku generator part three. We use that when removing the numbers. Um, so have a look there for more details. And QRNG for cell dot row comma cell dot column comma number equals zero. So if all those three Sudoku conditions are zero, then we can add that number as a candidate to the grid along with the other candidates. So sol.cells cell row cell column equals whatever is in sol.cells cell row cell column and the number. Okay, and here we end the if statement and we go to the next cell and then we will end the if and go to the next number. 
And this is a very rudimentary code just to explain you how to do it, but we should be using some variables for row and column, uh, some object variables for the range, for example, etc. So you can have a look at the code in the post for more details. Let me copy the QRNG function here, and let's see how it works for this Sudoku. Okay, we have the hints, and we can see some single positions to, to solve already, because it's rather an easy or medium level puzzle. So the next macro will resolve those naked singles. Sub solve singles, and for each cell in the grid of hints, so for each cell in solver.range b2 to j10, special cells Excel text values if the length of the value in that cell is 1, if len cell.value is 1, then we add that number to the solution or to the puzzle. Suit.cells, cell row, cell column, equals solver.cells, cell row, cell column.value. And if and we move to the next cell. And when finished, we can check if the puzzle is not yet solved. So if worksheet function count a sub range b2 to j10 is below 81, 81 is the total number of cells in a Sudoku puzzle, then if there were some changes or some numbers were added, we're going to generate a new grid of hints. So we could add up here num added. Number added is true when we change the numbers. And then if number added is true, then we call get candidates again. But if no more singletons were added and we still don't have a solution, so else we're going to call another macro to use some other solving techniques or the next solving techniques, which is going to find hidden singles. So call find hidden singles, and we end if and end the if here. And of course, we need to declare all the variables we're using. So up here, dim cell as range and num added as boolean. Now, a hidden single is also the only numeral for a given cell, but it is less obvious or visible to see than a naked single. So in this example here, we have uh, several hidden singles. For example, uh, number eight here in the first row and on the top right block as well. Also number eight in the last column and number six in that block. And there are some more. So there are different ways to get that with Excel VVA. This is just one of the options and it is a bit more complicated than the previous macros. We're going to loop through the grid of possibilities by row, column, and block. So let's see how it's done for rows. And the same applies to columns and blocks. So for r equals 2 to 10, looping by row, then so for c equals 2 to 10, the hints is the value in each cell for row r and column c. So hints equals solver dot cells r comma c dot value and now if hints is not empty so if we have some some hints in that cell we loop for each number within those hints within those pencil marks for that cell so for i equals one to length of the hints so if there are three hints there, this will loop three times, one for each number. And um, each time we get the number and put it into an array. So num i equals mid. So we're going to use the mid function for hints, comma, i, comma, one, one single um, uh, letter or, or number in this case. Then we check if that number appears in the hints for other cells in that row. So, and we're gonna do that with the inst 
function. So again, we need to loop. So we're going to use a, another loop for C2 in this case. We're going to change it. C2 equals 2 to 10. And again, hints 2 is going to be solver dot cells r comma c2 dot value and if hints 2 is not empty and c2 is different than c so that's not the the column where, where we uh, check the value then we're going to use the inst function which returns the position of a substring within a string so the string is hints 2 and the substring is num i so inst hints 2 comma num i is greater than zero then that's not a single it, 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 it shows more than once then not single equals true and that's going to be a, a boolean variable that we're going to use to check if it's a single or not if it's a, a, if it's a hidden single or not then we move to the next c2 and after looping through each cell here we check if not single is false and that means it was not found in any in any other cell then we add that to the solution then suit dot cells rc dot value equals num i and here we can go to the next i item um, in the hints and we end the if and then we go to the next column and the next row and that was only for rows we need to do that for columns and for blocks I know that's a bit more complicated but hopefully you get the idea for this example that would eventually solve the puzzles but for more difficult puzzles we need to use other techniques the next would be looking for naked and hidden pairs triples and quads you can find the macros in the file let me show you it's here it's quite long though and the more difficult the Sudoku, the more advanced the techniques. But you can see that the macros become more and more complicated. So ultimately, it's probably better to let computers do what they do best to crunch the numbers rather than keep adding logic deduction rules. So the full version of the Excel Sudoku solver uses a backtracking algorithm when it can no longer progress towards a solution with the logic rules. It selects a cell with the lowest number of hints available and chooses one of usually two values and then tries to find singles, pairs, etc., etc. again. And it may need to make more assumptions on the way and eventually it either reaches an unsolvable possible or a solution. If it's not solvable, it goes back to the last safe configuration. Those moves are saved to a stack in order to avoid repeating a wrong guess. So this method can solve any Sudoku puzzle. Check the post and then load the file and if you find a Sudoku you cannot solve, let me know. I will be surprised. So that's how we create a Sudoku solver in Excel using VVA macros. Thanks for watching.